My name is Jordan and I'm an integration engineer uh, here at Bitwarden. Uh, today we are uh, going to be going through the steps to configure a Bitwarden self-hosted instance uh, behind a uh, proxy environment, a squid proxy environment specifically. Uh, this video is a re-recording of one of our uh, Bitwarden Brilliance sessions. Uh, on Bitwarden Brilliance, uh, we live stream setting up Bitwarden uh, in various different scenarios, as well as showing off uh, various features of the product for specific use cases. Uh, so today, uh, we are going to set up a environment uh, behind a squid proxy server and uh, configure the operating system and uh, Docker to route all traffic through that squid proxy uh, to emulate uh, a common environment in um, customer installations. Uh, so uh, to get started, um, the uh, proxy environment is currently only supported on Linux. Um, there are some uh, things with uh, Docker desktop on Windows and not passing uh, the proxy environment variables into the containers properly. So uh, we only support Linux at this time uh, for this type of environment, uh, but any standard uh, web proxy will work with this kind of setup with or without uh, authentication. Uh, so before the recording, I did go ahead and set up two different VMs. One is running uh, squid proxy and the other one has um, uh, uh, egress traffic to the web disabled and has been configured with the appropriate HTTP and HTTPS proxy environment variables uh, so that traffic will flow correctly. Uh, I've also uh, set up um, the package manager to go through the squid proxy and uh, gotten uh, the Docker packages installed on that machine. So we're going to mostly be using Docker's instructions uh, for how to get uh, Docker traffic to flow uh, through the proxy. Um, we need to do some changes to the daemon configuration in systemd uh, by setting up a systemd override file. And then uh, under the uh, Bitwarden user, uh, we will be setting up um, a client.json file so that uh, those environment variables get passed in to the containers when they're created. Uh, we're going to be using um, a specific no proxy uh, environment variable uh, to make sure that the intra container networking does not go through the proxy. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, close out of the slides and get started uh, with the demo. Um, I am going to pull up our uh, on-premise deployment uh, steps here, but then we're just going to hop um, over here into the uh, SSH session that I have open um, right behind here uh, so that we can start making these configuration changes. Um, so just to show, uh, first of all, that I am uh, behind the proxy. We're going to try to make an outbound uh, request to the web which is failing uh, because it is not uh, going through the proxy. And then we're going to set that variable back up. And we can see traffic is now flowing and it is going through uh, my proxy over here on this other URL. So like I said, um, we have gone ahead and uh, installed uh, Docker from the package manager repositories. So let's go ahead and get uh, that systemd override file uh, set up. So we need to make a new uh, docker.service.d directory and then create a configuration file in there uh, called uh, anything but http-proxy is what I'm gonna go ahead and call it. So I am going to set this up so that the Docker daemon, uh, when it goes to pull images, knows to pull uh, HTTP and HTTPS URLs through my squid proxy. And then I'm also going to set the no proxy environment variable there. And then we are going to activate those changes by reloading uh, systemd. And then we're gonna go ahead and start Docker here. So Docker uh, is now started. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the last couple of commands that I need to do with sudo access. 
um, I'm going to set up the firewall uh, to allow uh, inbound traffic on the software firewall level. So I've got a trusted zone here. I'm going to go ahead and allow HTTP traffic and allow HTTPS traffic. And then I'm going to add the masquerade so that uh, NAT traversal happens correctly. Uh, and then we will go ahead and reload firewall D. And then we're going to proceed with the steps over here uh, to configure uh, the Bitwarden user. So I'm going to add uh, a Bitwarden user. I'm going to give that user a secure password. We're going to add the Bitwarden user to the Docker group. And then we are going to uh, go ahead and create um, some directories for that Docker user. So I'm going to make uh, slash op slash Bitwarden. I'm also going to put a dot Docker directory there. I'm also going to set that up in the home directory. Uh, we are then going to uh, set ownership on those uh, directories. And then we are going to configure the client or config.json file for the Docker client. Uh, so with that, we need this set up so that the Docker client is going to set all of these environment variables inside each created container. And then I'm going to copy that. To the Bitwarden users home directory. And then from there we are ready to go ahead and uh, move into the Bitwarden user, go over to our newly created directory, and download uh, the Bitwarden setup script. All right, which we will go ahead and run. So I'm going to do these next steps uh, off screen here, just running through the Bitwarden setup script. because I don't need to share some of these details on screen, like my license key, but I'm just doing a standard installation here, um, setting up a um, Bitwarden self-hosted instance the same way you would outside of a proxy environment. So we are running through this set of steps here. And then I'm going to set up my email as well. So then I can get a working Bitwarden installation up and running. So we are now pulling down uh, the containers here. We've got some pull completes, we've got some downloads. So these are going through uh, the proxy server as we've configured it. Uh, if Docker didn't have that systemd file, we'd be seeing a lot of failures here, uh, but we are grabbing uh, all of those containers and pulling them down, getting them extracted and installed. You can see I've got the uh, Docker Compose uh, v2 uh, installed here. So we've got a lot, of, a lot of scrolling, a lot of progress bars, but uh, all of these containers are now starting here. All right. 
throw a quick watch on a Docker PS and wait for these containers to come online here. These will usually all come online in about one minute. We usually see SSO and admin having the longest health checks because they have the most dependencies on the other containers. But at this point, we should be able to navigate directly to the Bitwarden instance. So this is all set up behind the proxy from here. I can go ahead and set up uh, my account here. Just grab a new secure password from my password generator and get logged in. So from here, I can go ahead and set up my new organization if I've got a license file. Uh, but those are all of the steps required to set up uh, Bitwarden behind uh, a web proxy. Um, we have full access uh, to everything being um, proxied out to the internet. What little traffic does uh, go out to the internet. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, the main places where you will uh, see uh, any issues if uh, these steps are not correctly working for you. We'll be pulling down those container images. If you're using Let's Encrypt, you might see an issue there. The setup container also does an initial license check against our servers. For the most part, um, Bitwarden is not communicating uh, with the internet on a regular basis uh, unless you enable our new billing sync feature to allow for the uh, sponsorship of free Bitwarden families on self-hosted. Uh, for more information about that functionality or uh, anything related to Bitwarden, uh, take a look at our help center. Uh, reach out to it at us at uh, bitwarden.com contact. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>